so happy to be here with you. Kind of accidentally, Gez found that Shirley and I, my wife Shirley sitting right there, were in Florida doing some business, and he said, before you go back to New York, can you come to this conference? And I said, well, we have a ticket. Don't worry about it. I'll send you another ticket. So here we are. Now, why would you want to know me? I mean, a lot of former congressmen running around. I'm the only certified public accountant ever elected to the U.S. government. The only practicing CPA. There have been a few lawyers who pass a CPA exam, but they practice as lawyers. And I think that's important because, you know, Congress is basically a legislature. And most of the people who get there come out of the assemblies and the senates of the states. So they're attorneys. And what you have now is over half of the members of Congress are lawyers. Now, I gave a joke when I left Congress because I was the only accountant. I said, imagine a place with 286 attorneys and no accountant. That's a terrible place if you were a business. Well, it's a terrible place if you're trying to keep track of the spending in Congress. What's the worst thing that's going on today? It's the economy. It's the national debt. It's the deficits. Well, the economy, basically people are worried about jobs. But let's not just be selfish and think about ourselves, even though think, you know times are tough. Who are we passing this debt on to? The next generation. Who is speaking for the next generation? The unborn. Nobody right now, because if you go to Congress like I was on the inside, everybody is saying, Joe, you're right, you're right, but I can't change it. This has been developing for years, and if I change it now, people are going to say, Joe, I'm responsible, I may lose my seat. And my answer to that is, you know, some of us are going to have to fall on our sword. Because the next generation is going to be impacted with a debt that is so horrendous, it is unbelievable. And you might think it's that $11 trillion that you've been hearing about. Much worse. It's $11 trillion if you think about the bonded debt. What do I mean by bonded debt? Treasury bills, savings, uh, no, uh, savings bonds, and the treasury notes. That's bonded. But there's a lot more off the books. Guess what? Social Security and Medicare. If you calculate, and we have actuaries, corporations have to do it, the federal government can do it, actuarially computed liability today for Social Security and Medicare alone, $45 trillion. And it's not on the books of the United States of America. I just went down to Congress in front of the Financial Accounting Standards Advisory Board to yell at them about that. me 24 years ago, I haven't changed too much, and there I am, a junior member of the minority party. Don't forget, Democrats control the House and the Senate. Well, I was there with Ronald Reagan. I'm not one of these partisan types, but I want you to know, it's not easy to do things when you're a junior member of the minority party. I banged away for four years, and when I left in 1990, here's the letter George Bush sent to me, dear Joe, it's in this, take it. He don't have this, by the way, there's a bunch of them up front, you can take it. I'm proud to tell you that I passed a bill that brought chief financial officers to every governmental department and agency. Imagine, I go to Congress and I don't see any CFOs. You got controllers, you got DOD auditors, you got people in the OMB, Office of Management Budget. You got so many things going on. What's going on back there? I'm a Catholic, and yet most of the people I quote are Protestant ministers like Norman Vincent Peale and Reverend Shuler. Norman Vincent Peale, the power of positive thinking, power of the plus factor. Reverend Shuler, I was only in my 20s. I bought those tapes, I put them in my car. Possibility thinking. Are you into possibility thinking? Outside the box, don't let other people set your agenda. And then I hooked on to the 10 words I love the most because I speak in high schools and colleges, and I give them the 10 most powerful words in the English language, and they're only two letters each. And when they're strung together, they're really powerful. If it is to be, it is up to me. <laughs> 
achieve. And I tell these young kids today, and some of the older ones, you are the most important partner in your life about where you are going. You should consult with people, you should have trust in your family and your wife and your spouses, but don't let other people set your agenda. And today these young kids are letting some of these other young kids with their suggestions about drugs and sex set their agenda because they don't want to be left out. They have to understand that they are the most important person in their lives right now. As they get older, they have a partnership with themselves to do the right thing. They've got to get a good education, but they have to know to set limits on their behavior. And maybe we have to do that too as adults in terms of spending. Hey, you know, this is not just a government problem. We've been on a spending bid for two, what, 20, 30 years, credit cards, right? And then we were seduced into maybe refinancing and we made our houses into ATMs, buy another SUV, take another vacation. So we created a consumption-based economy that's gotten us into trouble today. And we went from a savings rate when I was in Congress that was around three or four percent to zero. Japan was seven and eight percent. They're building for the future. We are down today. Now today we're not zero. Guess why? People are in such a panic about their future, they're beginning to save again. But that's hurting us because people are unemployed. And if people don't spend, how do you put people back to work? Listen, Mr. Obama has some big, big challenges with the Congress of the United States of America. Because on this, so okay, on, on the one hand, we want people to save. And on the other hand, we're saying that to get a good economy, they got to get out there and spend as well. So we're on that fine line. Why are we there? Because we didn't plan for the future. We have no reserves. It's like a bike. Why do bikes go bad? They land and land and sometimes they, you know what? I want to make more money, so I'm going to make some risky loans, which they did. And they didn't increase the capital requirements for that. So they didn't have the reserves. So when the market or when the economy goes bad and people want their money back, then things get even riskier. And they do even riskier things, which they did. And now some of them were bankrupt because they didn't have the money to pay back the people who deposited and lent them money. And this is what's going on. So we, we have to kind of press the reset button in America. You have to do it in your families, and the Congress of the United States and the President has to do it, because we have to change our behavior. Now, Gaz just told you about medicine. I can tell you about truth in medicine. My wife and I love integrative medicine. That's why I came here. I wasn't supposed to be here, but Gaz heard I was in Florida with Shirley on some business. He said, I'm sending you a ticket. Don't go back to New York till you come here. So I decided to get my book sent to him, give out gifts to everybody. Why is it important for me to give you that book and to speak? Information. If you don't have information, you're not empowered. How can you vote? What did Thomas Jefferson say? Information is the currency of democracy. Without information, what do you have? Communism. What did communism do? Kept the computers away. Why did the Soviet Union? Just Reagan building up the military. It went down because it didn't want its citizens to have free access to information. Computers. And, and that's right. In fact, capitalism. I heard a great quote. I'm going to tell you. Did you see this movie yet? Capitalism, a love story. Michael Moore. I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. Go see it. It is really good. I'm a Republican. My wife's a Democrat, but it's good. We're a bipartisan couple. Okay? Surely you're not running for anything. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, in any case, I think you got to go see it. Because there's a scene in there where he goes down to Wall Street and he's got a big, uh, mic I'm not going to tell you everything, but he's got a big um, bully horn, I think they pull over. And he yells up to the stock exchange people, uh, step downstairs and step away from the building. This is a crime scene. So he declared Wall Street a crime scene. I mean, he, I, I like that because I may go to Washington and do that in front of Congress, declare Congress a crime scene because they're not a, they don't have the right accounting system. Would you believe the Securities and Exchange Commission has an accounting system to protect the shareholders? It's called generally accepted accounting principle, not the cash basis like you use in your checkbook. But what does Congress use? The cash basis like you use in your checkbook so they can manipulate it. If they don't want to show an expense, they defer the payment. If they don't want to show a liability, they keep it off the books. You can't do that if you're a publicly traded corporation. You can go to jail for securities fraud. Don't you think these congressmen should be 
But if the people don't know about it, see, I need to speak to millions of people. And sooner or later, I'm going to get that internet going where I'm going to do this. Do you like this message? Do you think I should run again for Congress? Yeah. All right. It's not going to be easy because in my area, very tough. Very tough. New York State now has three Republicans out of maybe 30. When I was in Congress, out of 34, because we lost seats, uh, it was like 50 50, 17 to 17. So it's not going to be easy. But I said to myself, I don't care if I win or not, although it would be nice to win. I should run just to get the platform to make this the issue. Because I'd have to run against a very powerful woman who's the chairman of the Appropriations Committee, who spends like you can't believe, very liberal spender, who thinks she's doing the right thing. But I have to then say, hey, I'm adding up everything you spent for 20 years, and this is what's got us in trouble. What's the answer? So there's a lot that we've got to consider. Now, let me show you something. I carry it with me. Would you believe this is the annual financial statement of the United States of America? It's 118 pages. Now, this is supposed to be the government reporting to you. We just finished our fiscal year, September 30th. All right? We're going to have another one by January. I testified in front of a committee in Washington and said, look, the people are not going to read this. You need to put it in more simple language. I had to go down a day early to read it because I was afraid I'm supposed to be an expert that I'd be asked a question so I had to really understand it. But this is not the way to report to America. And if you want to see that this is still current stuff, this article just came out in August. Here's my article in the Washington Times. Truth, time for budgetary truth. And I thought I'd have some fun with you guys down here. I found an article I wrote in the Washington Times in 1990. Time to mind the stall. Nothing's changed. Here it is. 1990 is what? We're in 2009 right now. 2009, right? So what's the answer? The answer is you. We the people. That's what started this country. But right now the people are sleeping. Why are they sleeping? They're being seduced to do things that seem to be nice right now, but are hurting them in the long run. And they're sleeping. It's not their fault because they're not, they don't have the information. Did you know what I'm telling you right now? You probably had a sense for it. But now you'd have to say, wait, you know, I wouldn't normally believe in a former congressman. He may be looking for a job. He may be looking to get reelected. Hey, I was a certified public accountant for 22 years in the world's largest accounting firm. I gave up that job at the age of 43. My tax return showed I was making over 200000 a year, and I almost didn't get the next job in Congress, and all I got was 68. So you know I didn't do it for money. I felt it was time to kind of pay back to my immigrant parents who worked so hard. We had a little grocery store in the South Bronx. We moved to Westchester County, and I worked my way through college as a waiter, and I became a congressman. What is that? Great for me? No. That's great for America. America, that you can do anything you want. If it is to be, it is up to me. Now my other quote about communism and capitalism. Lord Acton, the great statesman, said that capitalism is the unequal distribution of wealth. But communism is the equal distribution of poverty. Makes sense, doesn't it? Gotta get some of those old sayings back off the shelf and start recycling them. Because he said that many, many years ago. Now I can go on and on and speak, and you probably have other things to do, but I'd be happy to take your questions and then comment on some other things if you want. Healthcare is a very important issue to me. And what's going on right now is kind of like making sausages. We still don't know what they're putting in there. That bill still has to be put together with all these committees, and we don't know yet the role that Obama has to play to play his hand for his particular kind of thinking. But whatever it is, I could spend an hour talking about it. Uh, we obviously need competition. Without competition, the insurance companies will just keep making money. And right now, there's a monopoly in the states, you know, you can't go across border. That's ridiculous. And why is it that even Obama now is saying, all right, we're not going to bargain on Medicare for the drug prices? Why? We need competition for those drug prices. They're very expensive. So there's a lot of things that are going on, but we're not going to have socialized medicine. Socialized medicine is when the doctors are hired by the government. That is the UK. We're not going to have that. But a lot of people fool you. They so no. What they are saying, though, is that we may have a single payer like me.
Medicare. And that to me is not socialized medicine. We may need a little bit more of that, but we also need competition. So we may need to start another group, some kind of a group, nonprofits, we have it in the state of Washington. Whatever it is, we need choice. Choice is American. Okay? Now, any questions on anything? I was also a tax guy, but I don't want to be a tax return today. <laughs> Republicans not getting in the game. But one of the reasons that I like what the Republicans are doing in part is they're forcing this issue that we need tort reform. If you want us to give up on what we're saying about another group to do insurance for the uninsured, then you give up on this malpractice stuff that's killing America. So my feeling is there's going to have to be some big give ups on both sides for, for the people to benefit. If they come through with one of these bills that is not really doing enough to reduce the cost of health care, it's going to be a waste of time to pass a health care bill and not do a meaningful health care bill at the time that we have the need for it would be ridiculous. That's my answer to that. Question. to find out. I'm, on, I'm 69, so I'm on Medicare. In fact, I'm trying to keep myself healthy because I don't have the expanded Medicare. Uh, the point is, I was surprised when I went to my chiropractor to find out that I got checks in the mail. It turns out that Medicare is reimbursing for about 60% of what you spend with the chiropractor. I didn't think that was possible. I know the military is going. So I think we're heading in the right direction where people are realizing that these alternative forms, uh, whether it's acupuncture, nutrition, stress reduction, uh, chiropractic, are for wellness. If you keep yourself healthy, that reduces the price, the cost of medicine for everybody. So we hope that this bill comes out with a good wellness component. I know there are some people that have proposed it, whether or not it survives, I don't know. It would be stupid not to have it. Let the people take responsibility for their health. This is not just the government. People have to do it as well. And we have to tell people, you got to be responsible. Now, obesity, for instance. Okay, some people have genetic problems. We know that. But other people can control what they consume. And the problem is, when they get to be really obese, let's say over 300 pounds, male or female, then all of a sudden, the cognitive genetic starts going bad, and they need a knee replacement. And that costs a lot of money. And you know, so, and, and the type 2 diabetes can get people, but type 2 diabetes can be prevented by not eating a lot of bread that sure turns into sugar, by not having a lot of beer. You know, there are things that you do. Nutrition is a very important part of keeping yourself healthy. So we need to take responsibility for understanding what it is we have to do stay healthy, and we need to teach our kids that. Right now, Americans are not healthy. Europeans, Shirley and I were in Europe one day, we stopped with what someone said was fast food to go in. They got steamed vegetables, they've got cold cuts. I didn't see any hamburgers or, or, or french fries or things like that, baked potatoes. That's why Europeans are much thinner than we are. They, they have a healthier way, and they also walk around a lot more. So you have to have good balance in life. I'm talking like I'm a doctor, but I'm not. This is what I do. And my wife's into nutrition. She's into Mediterranean diet. I love all these salads. And God forbid there's any white bread in the house, she'll go crazy. We throw it out. It's got to be whole wheat bread. Okay? So all these little things add up. Nuts, you know, they, they all add up. And I spent a day down here with guests at the clinic and went around, and I'm amazed at all the other things that are now we take with us medical center. It's amazing how many other things can be introduced into your lifestyle and how you get uh, better. So he put me in a chair. He says, this chair is made in Japan. $7,000 chair. And I sat there. I've never gotten such a good massage. Then he put something with oxygen.
oxygen around me. He said, just meditate. I'm putting this on your eye. I say that for 15 minutes, breathing in this oxygen on this chair. I said, we got to send this to New York. This is great. If you do feel better, oxygen has a way of energizing, energizing your cells. You know? Yes, another question. How do you stay out of jail and owe the IRS $545,000? You were in jail? No, 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 no. I know of somebody who owes the IRS $525,000, and they're not in jail. How do you do that? Well, I mean, does the IRS know yes. he hasn't paid the money? Yes. I'm sure if he's on their list, they're like sharks. They're like the wolves of the U.S. government. Somewhere along the line, that guy is going to get caught. They're probably deferring it to try to make some deal to see if he can pay it out over a long period of time. Because once you're in jail, you know, you can't pay anything. All right? It's not, it's not like uh, England was 200 years ago. You steal a loaf of bread, they throw you in jail. Right. So they're probably trying to figure out it's better to keep him outside working and we'll make a deal to see what we can get back. It doesn't work. It doesn't work? Well, I mean, he can't be a magician. I mean, unless he... You're, unless you're hiding out. Is that, that well, if he's it? hiding, that's another thing. I mean, you, you want to make a citizen's arrest, you can get 15%. I'm getting, I'm getting <laughs> <laughs> that might not be bad. In any case, listen, the question, though, that that leads to is why are so many people not paying all their taxes? Because we have a very comp, and I can say this because I was a tax partner with Arthur Anderson. And let me tell you, our internal revenue code is so complex, it allows the wealthy people to hire experts so they have all the loopholes. Even though they're in a higher bracket, they never end up paying the right tax because they're always deducting something or they put it offshore. Finally, we're going after these offshore entities. So we need to change that code and make it a simple tax. Now, we may not want to eliminate the income tax altogether, but I think we have to implement a flat tax, value-added tax, because you can't, you can't get out of that. When you go to buy something, it's there. Everybody's a tax collector. And I think we need a form of that, because someone told me there's like hundreds of billions of dollars that are not being collected. And if that's the case, then people say, well, if someone's not paying their taxes, why am I paying my taxes? That's not fair. So, this is another good point. We have a lot to do with it. Talking about taxes, I have nothing against Charlie Wrangle, black or white. But you can't have the head of the tax panel now saying he didn't pay taxes on a million five hundred thousand dollars in income, and he forgot to put in his villa, and this and that. I know Charlie very well. But it doesn't look good to America when you're Democrat or Republican if the head of the tax committee is not paying his taxes. It's just common sense. Hi, I'm Joe Diaguardi, the founder of Truth in Government. Truth in Government is committed to telling you the truth about government spending. And the way that has to be done is to bring principles that have been promulgated in the accounting profession by professionals over the years to government. It's not being done today. And as a result, Congress especially is getting away without the standards that we need to tell you the truth about real government spending. So Truth in Government wants to bring accountability, fiscal responsibility, transparency, the rules that the Security and Exchange Commission imposes on publicly traded companies to the U.S. government. And that will stop the Congress from lying to you about what is really going on with the federal deficits and the national debt. You know, the current financial crisis required a bailout. Many people didn't like it, uh, depending upon how they saw their political philosophy. Some felt it was too much intervention by government and the private sector. But it's obvious that we needed to do something because here we had the head of the Federal Reserve System, Mr. Bernanke himself, saying that based on what he saw, that we may have been three days away from the collapse of the entire economy here in the United States. And obviously, if this economy collapses, it becomes a worldwide issue. So here you have this crisis in, in mortgages that was created by bad accounting or poor accounting and, and lack of oversight. Now, when I look at this, I look at the future and I see another gathering storm. It's not World War II, but it could be even worse from an economic point of view because 
I now see that the accounting system that we've stayed on, this Mickey Mouse cash basis, has disguised the real cost of government. And in effect, has created, in my mind, a subprime national debt. Why do I say that? Well, we now know, because it's been cited several times, that only two items, Medicare and Social Security, account for $53 trillion in unfunded and unrecorded liabilities on what should be the books of the United States of America. But since they don't have outside auditors coming in, it's hard to tell whether we have a set of books at all. So it's not the $9.3 trillion that you've heard. That's the bonded debt. That's debt that is covered by Treasury bills, U.S. notes, U.S. bonds. And even there, only $5.3 trillion of that is in the hands of the public, and over a trillion, by the way, owned by China, and a little bit more owned by Japan and, and, and Germany. But you've got $4 trillion that is not in the public hands, that are IOUs that we've put into Treasury bills, the Social Security Trust Fund, the Highway Trust Fund, and these amounts have been used for other things. You cannot get away with that if you were a publicly traded corporation, but that shell game was played. But worse than that $4 trillion that has to be replaced, we have this $53 trillion and more.